Hello. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the Zigolo wing rib. Now the Zigolo is a motor glider and has big wings and there's quite a few ribs to make. So if you can get the process off pat then you're going to build these wing ribs very quickly. If you, uh, if you don't use the correct sequence or you have a problem with it it's going to take you ages. So uh, if you follow my sequencing you'll find you build them very quickly. Now the method that I use hasn't been vetted by uh, Aviad, so it's purely my uh, in interpretation of how they should be built. Now before we start, I'd like to show you here what I have. It's, um, I took the full size pattern for the wing rib from Aviad's website and I output it onto paper. In fact, I got a local graphics company to output it onto paper, heavyweight paper and using double sided uh, tape I've stuck it to a bit of board and in fact this is the actually the lid off of the Zigolo box so I've just cut a bit of it off and I've then laminated over the top with 2 inch wide uh, 3M sellotape just to make it a bit more durable and you've actually got a nice flat surface here to work on now you'll see here a, couple, a, a broom handle I've cut a couple of pieces off and screwed it on the reason I've done that is purely uh, that when you've uh, got your rib made you probably will need to just bend it to the final shape and it's a good way of gripping it and it means you can bend it without risking damage. Now I'm probably making this sound a bit more difficult than it really is because it's a very simple process. But if you spend a little while making yourself a, a board like this with a full size rib on it it will speed you up and it will improve your accuracy on the building. Now. Looking at the components for the uh, wing rib, we've got an upper rib, which is pre-bent and drilled, like this, and we've got the lower, the lower uh, rib. The lower rib is almost straight, but it has got this kind of turn up at the end, so you can tell that that is the front, the leading edge side. We've also got the bracket front and rear that hold it together. The larger one goes on the front. This cutaway here is for the spar, the leading edge spar. And this is the smaller one which goes on the back. And again, the same cutaway for the trailing edge spar. Now you'll see that one edge on here is, is a rolled edge where the rib fits into, and that's always the lower surface, front and back. So this is the lower surface here, and this is the lower surface on this one. And so the way that uh, I've found the best way to build these ribs is to start off with the lower start off with the lower rib. Now if you look at the Zigolo instructions you'll see that they ask you to use a three millimeter rivet which goes right through this tube and rivets both sides at the same time. Um, three millimeters is a pretty inconvenient size because you can't get a three millimeter Clico and what I've been doing is I've actually gone up to 3.2 millimeters which is one eighth which means that the Clicos fit in addition, it gives us a little bit of jiggle room where if the holes don't quite line up, we can actually make them line up, which is, which is a, quite helpful. And uh, the rivets that I've been using are here. I got them from Screwfix. They're 3.2 by 6 millimeter. They're very cheap. They're about 12 pounds per thousand. And uh, I've used a lot of these on sport cruisers. We use them to hold the windows in and all the fiberglass components on and also on the trail where we hold the windows in with them and again wing tips, tail plane tips, that kind of thing. They're nice rivets, they won't corrode, uh, they're nice and easy to get out if you need them out. They're not particularly structural but they're perfectly good enough uh, for this application. The other point is that I'm using a, rivets, a rivet in from each side and that'll give you a much neater finish and also it gives you more room again for uh, t to cope with any misalignment. It's a much neater way of doing it and structurally uh, no different at all from putting a rivet right the way through. So, starting at the beginning, if you get the bottom rib and you'll see that the leading edge bit of it is turned up, so that's the bit we're going to start on. And we want the front bracket, which is the bigger one. We want the rolled edge, which is the bottom, which goes onto this, uh, onto this rib and we want the leading edge part up forward to this part here where the leading edge spar goes. So if you just align it by eye, just roughly by eye, and you'll see that it's quite a tight fit. You know, in places it probably looks like it doesn't fit very well, but we've got to make it fit. 
And the best way I've found to do that is to take a, a 2.5 millimeter drill. This is 332 if you're working Imperial. And, and what I want you to do is take the rearward hole, not the front hole, the rear hole, and I want you to align it visually as best you can, and then put, put, the, drill, put the drill in. Now, you may be able to get this right the way through without actually having to use the drill, but, but I've found that that's not always the case. So if you can align that hole visually, put the drill through, and remember this is undersized, so you know you've got a, a bit of uh, you've got a little bit of, of working tolerance there. And if you actually all I'm doing here, and the drill's actually slipping in the chuck because I haven't tied it up properly. All I'm doing here is I'm looking for the drill on the back edge, and here it comes. So it's come right through now. And I'm going to undo the chuck and leave, take the drill out and I'm actually going to leave the drill in there. So this is, this is holding it now in position for me and that's, that's the final position effectively on that, um, on that rib. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at the leading edge, I'm going to look at the front hole and I'm going to pull it in as best I can and the best way of doing that is to grip the bracket and pull it towards the, the actual rib and I'm going to get my 3.2 drill now and I'm going to drill through from both sides. Now, don't be tempted to push the drill straight the way through. We're going to use the fact that we're putting the rivets in from either side, we're going to use that to our advantage. So I'm going to drill in. So that's one. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side, all the time holding the bracket tight against the rib. OK. Now, just to clean those burrs off. Remember, this material isn't anodized. If it was anodized, the fabric wouldn't stick to it. So we're not destroying any cladding here or any uh, corrosion protection. And then we're going to put a, a rivet in and pull it. No point here in setting up the pneumatic riveter, a complete waste of time. Just do these by hand. Make sure you pull the rivet nice and tight against the, uh, against the work. So that's one on one side. And we're going to put one in on the other side. Exactly the same. Okay. So now we've got that we've got that riveted on both sides. It's in nice and tight and we've aligned we've got the best alignment we could. Now what we're going to do now is take this drill out which we're going to probably be easier ways to is to uh, put the chuck back in. Tighten it up. Take the drill out. And we're now going to go back through with the 3.2. Again, on, the, on these rearward holes. So one. Again, don't be tempted to go straight through with your drill. Drill from either side. Because it could be that the alignment isn't perfect. And we don't want it. We want these holes to be as round as possible. We don't want any oval holes or snowman holes or anything like that. So you put your rivets back in. Still got the mandrel from the old one on there. Same on the other side. By the way, if you use um, a rivet longer than six millimetres, you'll find that the rivets actually hit each other inside the tube and hold off. So don't be tempted to use any rivets that you've got laying around that are longer than that because they won't work. Right, and we're going to do exactly the same with the rearward bracket. So rear bracket, make sure you get it on the right way round. It goes on with the trailing edge spar bit pointing backwards. I'm going to use exactly the same process, so I've got my 2.5mm drill, I'm going to put that through, that one's gone in really easily, which is a good sign, I'm still going to leave it in there, whilst I drill off, and again, I'm doing exactly the same, I'm going to hold this bracket against tightly, 
against the rib while I drill this off. So that's one side. That's the other side. Clean off the burrs. And uh, we're going to put the rivets in. You'll, you'll find that you get really quick at these ribs after a while. And uh, I mean, there's a substantial number of them, so you've got plenty of. Uh, Plenty of time to practice. Okay, put that rivet in, and there we go. So here we are now. We've got the uh, rear bracket riveted on with the drill still in. I'm going to take the drill out. It came out very easily this time, and I'm going to drill through the rear holes, remove the burrs, and again put the rivets in one at a time and pull them. Obviously if you wanted to use a pneumatic riveter you could but I can't really see the point. On the 4 mil rivets that the Zigolo is mainly built out of you can pull a couple by hand and then it gets really tedious uh, but with these little ones absolutely no problem. There we go. So we've now got both brackets riveted on the bottom. So we've now got to add the top the top uh, part of the rib and I use a completely different process now. What I do is I'd lay it flat on the bench and I would get your 3.2 millimeter drill and open up. To start with we're going to open up the the furthest forward set of holes on the bracket. Now this time you can go right the way through if you want to. So that's 3.2, turn it round, do the same on this one. 3.2, and we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the ribs. Just the front hole. And the same at the back. Just deal with those burrs. They're only tiny, but they do hold it off if you don't clean them off. Okay, and this is where your Clecos come in. So you want copper Clecos, one eighth Clecos, and just Clico the thing together. Now, you will find you can get a Clico in from each side. It, it, it's not perfect because they do kind of interfere with each other at the, um, you know, in the middle of the tube, but you can, it can be done. So, there we go, one Clico there. You'll have to slightly lean on this to get it to line up, but it will line up. So we've got Clico in each side now. And now we're going to turn it over and get the Clicos in the other side. And as you can see, we've managed to get a Clico in from each side. Same with this as well. So this one really isn't lining up all that well. And so what I'm doing is I'm leaning on it and I'm going to force that to line up. So now you can see I've got a Clico in each side at the very rear and at the very front. So what I want to do now is get, go back to my 3.2 drill and just check the alignment on the set, of, the set of holes inside. And this one doesn't look too bad, so I'm going to go straight through. Not, not not straight through the whole thing, just into this side. Clean off the burr. And I'm going to put a rivet straight in there. And 
going to do the same at the back. And again, the alignment on this looks pretty good. So I'm not going to mess around with it. I'm going to thank my good fortune and go straight in. Clean up the burr. And uh, straight in with the rivet. Turn it over and do exactly the same thing. Hopefully the alignment is still good, which it is. So I'm not gonna, I haven't got any work to do here. I'm just gonna drill both the holes. Just take those burrs off. And I'm gonna rivet it straight away. Same on the rearward. Okay. All the clicos can come out now. Now these holes have had clicos in them, so there shouldn't be any problem. You should just be able to rivet straight in and rivet it. Get out the way so you can see what's going on. That's that. If you have any problems lining this up, you can just squeeze the rib slightly and it, you'll find it'll, it'll pivot on the rivet that's already in there and should be able to get it straight in. As, uh, as you use your rivet gun, or I found the nozzles tend to come undone and then the mandrels don't drop out which makes it a little bit difficult. This one's a bit tight. So I think I'm going to make the decision just to run the drill back through there. Now it's gone in quite easily. I think this one as well, probably. The, the clay code is very slightly smaller than the, than the actual rivet, so. Okay, there we go. So now, here we are, we've got a wing rib. And we've got uh, eight rivets in each, in each side of it. And uh, this is where we need our, um, this is where we need our jig, because we can place the rib in it. And, look down at the in profile and you, on this one I can see that the rib needs to be moved up a little bit here to line up with the jig. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold the rib down so it can't go anywhere and I'm just gently bending it and you could do a little bit at a time and, and, and that's pretty well it. That's lined up and that fits perfectly and that's all it took. Now, we get our two uprights, there's a long one and a short one. Long one goes at the front, short one goes at the back. It's pretty important here to hold these tight in the rib when you drill them off. So I'm actually gonna, gonna drill them off one at a time. I'm gonna drill the top one off first. So we go through with our 3.2 drill right through the middle of the tube. Now I haven't been bothering to mark these. You could mark them but in actual fact it's so easy just to get them through the middle of the tube so 
I'll show it to you in a moment. Okay. There we go. So that's filled the hole. Just knock the bar off, rivet, and Rivet. And on the bottom, again, you must make sure that you hold the rib up tight against the uh, against the upright when you drill it off. That's it. Just clean off the burr and in with the rivet end up with quite sore fingers pushing these rivets in. There it goes. And pull it. Exactly the same with the back one. Line it up as best you can. Make sure you hold it tight and go straight through. One doesn't have a burr on it at all, so I'm going to just go straight in and rivet it. One more. Line it up nicely. Hold it tight. Now, so here's our rib. The only thing left to do is to bend over these end pieces, which you do with your fingers, just wrap it round like that. And that's it. And you do that in all four cases. One, two, three, four. And that's it, here we go. Here's our finished wing rib. So it wasn't too much of an effort. And actually you'll speed up enormously as you go. Right. <laughs>